Well, it's set in 1988 in the sleepy English village of Champton, St Mary, which has got a grand aristocratic estate and a noble family that's lived there since the Norman Conquest. Uh, a village attached and then a lovely church with a rectory, and in the rectory lives the rector, Canon Daniel Clement, with his feisty mother, Audrey, and his two Dachshunds, Cosmo and Hilda. And it looks like an absolutely classic English scene. And then one day, Daniel gets up in church and he announces to his parish that he's going to install a new lavatory in church. And that sets in chain the sequence of events that leads to murder and mayhem. And Daniel's job is to figure out who, how and why. I love the fact that it uh, all sort of spirals out of control from a discussion about a new lavatory in church. Is this from past personal experience? <laughs> Well, actually, the, 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 the biggest row I ever had in church, I think, was when I stood up one Sunday and announced to the congregation that we were planning to install a new lavatory. And people went absolutely bananas. And another time was that there was an argument over whether you should have one bite or two bite mince pies after a carol service. Because it's not about the mince pies. It's not about the lavatory. It's about all the important stuff that bubbles up in people's lives. And they bring that to church and occasionally, uh, without any warning, or with little warning, it erupts like a volcano and everything uh, all of a sudden is all over the place. Just listening to you there, I, I, if you close your eyes, I can, I can imagine listening to you on the radio and, and many of our viewers will know that you're a very popular radio presenter, TV presenter you've, and, and, and author as well. And many of those watching you now will have read your, your book, The Madness of Grief, when you uh, wrote that back in 2019 after the death of your partner, David. And a few weeks ago on this programme, we spoke to Jenny Powell about her dad who died quite recently. And she spoke, uh, Richard, really openly and honestly about the rawness of grief. I think it happened quite, quite soon for her. Do you feel, and this might be an ignorant question, and forgive me if it is, do, do you feel that your grief a few years on has changed? Has it matured? I, th I don't know if I'd say it was matured. I think what happened... I think you start off, because it's so devastating, you start off hoping you'll get over it. And then you realise you don't get over it. It's not that sort of a thing. It's not like a cough. It's like losing a limb. You learn to live with it. And two and a half years on, I've just got more used to the world without David in it. And also more determined to stand up and face forwards and try to make my way through this new landscape. And it's, I mean, it's a slow process and sometimes you have good days and bad days. Mm. Um, but that's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to do. And do you think that recovering from that and still living with that, was that part of the reason why you decided to leave your role in the church? Partly that. I mean, partly it was because, um, you know, the big fight over whether gay relationships, the, the status of gay relationships in the church compared with straight relationships, that's an ongoing battle. And I've been fighting that battle for a long time. And I realised after a while that I just didn't really have much more energy for that fight and I just didn't want to be part of it anymore. Um, and also I needed a new start, Dan. I think sometimes, you know, life events like bereavement can require you. It's not just the person who goes, it's the future you had with them that mm. goes. So you need to come up with something new. And that made... I mean, I loved my parish. I certainly didn't want to be a vicar anywhere else, but I knew I needed to make a fresh start somewhere else and see what life looked like. And talking of fresh starts, you are someone who's lived a very varied life. You've been a pop star, a presenter, an author, a vicar, a bit of a dancer as well. Uh, is, is there <laughs> something else you are, you are going to find? Are you, is there new ground for the Reverend Richard Coles to conquer? Well, never rule anything out, although I have to say... Ballroom in Latin, I think, is now effectively <laughs> ruled out after a passadoble that will live in infamy forever. Um, I quite like to learn to yodel, Dan, but I'm not sure how I'm going to do that in East Sussex. But maybe I uh, find myself a yodeling teacher. For some reason, it's one of those weird things I've always wanted to do. And in lockdown, I learned the accordion, which was another thing I always wanted to do. So maybe one more, one more trick. Uh, can, can, would you like to yodel for us a little bit now? I mean, do you want to do you want to try that out as we finish this interview? This could be a, what what a brilliant end to our Channel Five interview if you could yodel us out, Richard. Yodel, -e yodel, -e and that sounds like Larry Grayson. I know. Yeah. Not, There's a touch so of the touch you know, of the Graysons yeah. about it, but I think I think there could be a new career in there, Richard. It's an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for telling us a bit about your book and a bit about your life, and we wish you all the best with it as well. Thank you. Nice to talk to you, Dan. Thank you.